might have prolonged menstruation for over seven days. You might pass large blood clots over the size of one inch in diameter. You might use a lot more sanitary products than usual, for example, at least two tampons or pads within two hours. You might be someone who needs double sanitary protection during your periods, otherwise you'll flood through selling your clothing and furniture and everything else around. Because you're losing so much blood, you end up hmm, unexplained vaginal bleeding. A sudden change in your menstrual flow it makes you wonder what could be the cause. Let's discuss nine conditions associated with unexplained vaginal bleeding. Their causes, signs that could alert you to which particular condition is responsible, how doctors make a diagnosis, and just a little overview of the potential treatment options. Hashtag let's be informed. Hi, I'm Dr. Sylvia, an NHS consultant in general practice that's family medicine. Welcome to Ask Away Health. So we're doing this in no particular order. So let's start with number one on my list of nine conditions that could lead to unexplained vaginal bleeding, hormonal imbalance. Not all hormone imbalance will affect your menstrual cycle or lead to unexplained vaginal bleeding. However, the most common ones can happen from conditions associated with abnormal level of your thyroid hormones or PCOS, which is polycystic ovary syndrome. Certain conditions can also increase the risk of imbalance of your reproductive hormones. Examples, stress, being overweight or obese, certain medications, for example, antidepressants. So if you were having unexplained vaginal bleeding because of hormone imbalance, what kind of symptoms could you experience? You may have irregular menstrual cycles, changes in the pattern of your blood flow from usually light regular bleeding to very heavy flow or from a normal flow to very light or scanty bleeding. And you may also get spotting in between your menstrual period. Additionally, for conditions like PCOS, you could also have symptoms like prolonged menstrual bleeding, acne, excessive hair growth, being overweight, and so many others. Check out this playlist where I talk about PCOS and other hormone related conditions. To make a diagnosis and work out which hormone imbalance could be responsible, we will not rely on your symptoms alone. You will have blood tests for hormone levels, as well as other tests such as a pelvic ultrasound scan to assess organs like your ovaries or the womb. In this instance, treatment will involve removing the cause of the hormone imbalance and you may have different treatment options that depend on the cause of the hormone imbalance. Some people may need hormone therapy, for example, if you have low thyroid hormones. Lifestyle changes, for example, weight loss can come in handy for conditions like PCOS and it can be helpful to manage and reduce stress. Sometimes birth control pills can be used to regulate hormone imbalance. For example, teenage girls experiencing irregular menstrual bleeding in the early stage of their reproductive cycle or with conditions such as fibroids. In some women, the birth control pill may also be responsible for their hormone imbalance. Second on my list is fibroids. These are benign growths of the womb commonly affecting women of reproductive age or older. We don't know the exact cause of fibroids. We think they may be related to hormone imbalance, but that alone doesn't explain the occurrence or development of fibroids. Your genes and lifestyle may contribute. You may also be at greater risk of developing fibroids as you grow older, if you have a family history or are overweight. So what is it about your symptoms that could make us think about fibroids? Well, unexplained vaginal bleeding, including very heavy menstrual bleeding, experiencing pelvic pain or pressure, frequent urination or constipation. These are a few of the symptoms that women may experience if they have fibroids. Fibroids can't be diagnosed with a blood test. We will need to look at the womb either via a pelvic ultrasound scan or with an MRI magnetic resonance imaging. For suspected fibroids that are not so easily seen, you might need to have something called a hysteroscopy. And this is where a specialist inserts a tiny tiny tube that's got a camera at its end into your womb to have a look at the tissues around. My third cause of unexplained vaginal bleeding is an infection of your genital tract. Most commonly, this is a sexually transmitted infection. Sexual infections of the lower genital tract, that is the vagina and the cervix, if they're left untreated, can lead to a serious condition known as pelvic inflammatory disease or PID. This condition affects the higher organs of the genital tract, so your womb, the fallopian tubes and ovaries. And so problems like adhesions or scars after the infection or infertility could be a big risk with PID. Common causes of 
actually transmitted infections are things like gonorrhea, chlamydia, trichomonas, and so on. You are more at risk of developing a sexually transmitted infection. If you're having unprotected sexual intercourse, if you're having sex with multiple sexual partners, or if you've had an STI in the past. So how do you know if your unexplained vaginal bleeding is associated with an STI? Well, alongside the bleeding, you may also experience an abnormal vaginal discharge, pelvic pain, other symptoms of infection like a fever, and pain during sex. Different tests could help us to diagnose infections. Apart from a pelvic examination, we will do vaginal swabs. You might need to have a blood test and sometimes a scan, which is necessary to assess any damage to your internal organs. Treatments will include antibiotics. With PID, sometimes you may need to be hospitalized, especially if you need intravenous antibiotics. Afterwards, you might need to have some time off to recover and to rest. Now, if you have this fourth condition, you may also be in for some unexplained vaginal bleeding. We also don't know why this condition develops, but here are the symptoms. Experiencing recurring pelvic pain, which may or may not happen around or at the same time as your menstrual cycle. You may also get painful periods and have pain during sex. So we're talking about endometriosis. In this condition, tissues that belong within the inner lining of the womb are found in other parts of the body. People who are at risk of this condition often have relatives who also have it. It's also thought that starting your menstrual period earlier than usual or not having given birth or had children could be related to developing endometriosis. Well, how do we diagnose or detect this condition? Well, not by a blood test. Your doctor might suspect it's going on from examining you, but they will arrange for you to have a test called a laparoscopy. This is where a specialist puts a tube with a camera at its end into your abdomen and pelvis in order to visualize the organs. You may also have certain scans which could demonstrate the presence of those endometriosis tissues outside the womb. If you want to learn more about endometriosis, please check out this video here. But what about the treatments? Endometriosis treatment usually depends on how severe it is and to what degree it's affecting or impacting on a person's life. For example, some ladies get these endometriosis spots in their ovaries and this potentially could affect how the ovaries work and lead to infertility. Such people may require surgery to remove those endometriosis tissue. They may require IVF to have children. In others, the endometriosis tissues or cysts may be little and look located around the lining of the pelvis or on the bowel where they can cause pain and other symptoms. So treatments might include medicine for pain. Hormone therapy can also help and we've also mentioned that surgery could be an option depending on the type of disease. Coming in at number five on this list of causes of unexplained vaginal bleeding is a miscarriage, an early miscarriage. An early miscarriage is experiencing pregnancy loss before 24 weeks of pregnancy in the UK. Now the first signs that something is not quite right may be unexplained vaginal bleeding. This is often described as spotting or progressive vaginal bleeding. It might be heavier with blood clots. Some women may also pass pregnancy tissue while experiencing pelvic or abdominal cramps at the same time. Particularly for early miscarriage, we think the cause is a genetic abnormality in the fetus that's nothing to do with the parents. But your body detects that something is not quite right in the pregnancy and this leads to a miscarriage. We do know of certain conditions that could increase the risk of a miscarriage happening. They include the older age of the parent, either one or both of the parents, certain medical conditions, for example, diabetes, fibroids, being of black ethnicity and having experienced miscarriages in the past. To make a diagnosis of a miscarriage, we would check blood hormone levels, particularly the beta HCG and conduct a pelvic scan to look for or to detect the baby's heartbeat and any other signs that indicate the pregnancy is continuing. Treatment of miscarriage, there are different options. One of them is monitoring while nature takes its course course, but there could also be medical interventions. And we are at number six, cause of unexplained vaginal bleeding, and this one is cancer. By cancer, I'm referring to cancer of genital organs, for example, the cervix and the womb. Sometimes we do not know what causes the cancer to develop in the first place. However, nearly all cases of cervical cancer are linked to infection with the human papillomavirus HPV. You're more likely to pick up this infection if you smoke or if you have sex with multiple sexual partners. What about womb cancer? Well, womb cancer is commoner in older women. It could develop following exposure to drugs, for example, HRT, being overweight, having conditions like diabetes and PCOS, as well as a thick womb lining are factors that might increase the risk of developing womb cancer. So how could someone experience unexplained vaginal bleeding in the context of womb or cervical cancer? Symptoms could include bleeding in between the periods or bleeding after sex. There could also be pelvic pain. And women who have gone through the menopause may experience new vaginal bleeding, which will prompt them to see their doctor urgently to investigate this. To make a diagnosis, it's essential for your doctors to act rapidly. 
they will arrange tests like a camera test to have a look into the cervix and the womb you would have a biopsy which is where a small piece of tissue is taken from one of those organs to examine closely in the laboratory there will also be scans to assess the state of the organs and check if there is a spread to other parts of the body blood tests to check if you're anemic assess your liver and kidney function will also be important as it relates to treatment speaking of treatment this follows the stage of the disease when it is diagnosed if it's caught early can include surgery radiotherapy and chemotherapy having cervical smears to screen for early changes in the cervix that might suggest future cancer as well as having the hp vaccine significantly reduce the risk of cervical cancer now we're at number seven and the next cause of unexplained vaginal bleeding could be having a blood clotting disorder what do i mean for most of us having a small cut involves a small degree of bleeding after which the bleeding starts to slow down and eventually dries up your body handles this through the clotting process which it uses to minimize any blood loss it involves a complex mechanism of proteins and blood cells which are triggered when bleeding starts to happen anywhere in the body but failure of this mechanism for whatever reason can lead to persistent bleeding after injuries or cuts and in our specific example can mess about your menstrual pattern leading to unexplained vaginal bleeding blood clotting disorders where the blood fails to clot can occur naturally and we have examples such as hemophilia or von willebrand's disease these are inherited conditions because you could also acquire blood clotting disorders for example through developing an autoimmune disease or from cancer so what other symptoms could you experience if unexplained vaginal bleeding is caused by a blood clotting problem well excessive bleeding you might find that you bruise very easily when you bump your arm or fall against the table for example and you might find that it takes a lot longer for you to stop bleeding after a reasonably small cut but in particular here is how your period could be affected you might have prolonged menstruation for over seven days you might pass large blood clots over the size of one inch in diameter you might use a lot more sanitary products than usual for example at least two tampons or pads within two hours you might be someone who needs double sanitary protection during your periods otherwise you'll flood through selling your clothing and furniture and everything else around because you're losing so much blood you end up developing anemia feeling tired or exhausted and looking pale so there's a higher risk of developing it if it runs in the family or you develop changes to certain genes the diagnosis of these conditions often begins from the description of the symptoms and examination however blood clotting tests will show the abnormalities and can be quickly picked up as well as genetic tests what about the treatments well presently there are no cures for the inherited blood clotting conditions at this time however certain medicines or drugs can be used to help prevent or stop bleeding episodes so it can be controlled it's important for precautions to be taken before certain procedures like surgery or even dental procedures and if you have heavy periods which is most likely to happen you could be prescribed birth control pills to help to regulate and lighten the flow of blood related to these blood clotting disorders let's talk about cause number eight which is medication side effect especially if you're taking an anticoagulant anticoagulants are medicines that thin the blood they make it less likely for the blood to form clots so potentially if they're not used carefully they increase the risk of continuous bleeding so you'll be wondering which conditions would one need to have their blood in this shape well these drugs are essential because there are certain conditions in which the blood is sluggish and more likely to clot pregnancy is an excellent example where you are more likely to develop a blood clot while you're pregnant and even up to six weeks after having the baby other conditions are people who have a deficiency that is they don't have enough of protein s or protein c or factor 5 Leiden deficiency having any of these means that your blood is more likely to clot this can lead to life-threatening problems if the clot develops in the lungs it's something that could also develop after major surgery including cesarean section so we definitely need anticoagulants to help us treat or prevent conditions like these so what is it about their side effects well if you're taking an anticoagulant you need to be aware that you could experience a side effect where it thins the blood too much and then you are left at a risk of continuous bleeding this could happen if the anticoagulant is one that interacts with other medicines that you're taking or if you accidentally take too much of the anticoagulant so how can we tell what's going on well you start bleeding more your skin gets bruised or marked very easily some people experience bleeding into the urine they might develop bleeding in the whites of the eye or excessive bleeding after very minor injuries 
to look at the cause of the problem, your clinician needs to know that you're taking anticoagulant treatment. They can do blood tests that look at the impact of blood loss on your cells, for example, how much anemia that you've developed. So treatments will usually mean adjusting the medication somehow. It may be stopping it, it may be adjusting the dose. Sometimes you might be given an antidote to reverse the bleeding effect. If you also have a condition that increases your risk of bleeding while on your anticoagulant therapy, that might need to be treated. And common examples are things like a urinary tract infection or chest infection. So we're now looking at the ninth condition that may lead to unexplained vaginal bleeding. And in this case, I've chosen to explore the copper intrauterine device or copper coil. Now, this is a birth control device that contains copper and it's usually inserted into the womb. It is a very effective birth control method. And it works simply by the presence of copper being within the womb and making it a space that is not convenient or habitable for the sperm. So this reduces the risk of fertilization and implantation happening. Despite these benefits, if you're using it for birth control, it can also carry complications that include unexplained vaginal bleeding. In that case, what you might find is irregular bleeding episodes, pelvic pain, as well as changes to your menstrual flow. So very heavy bleeding, more often than not, sometimes spotting or just bleeding at inconvenient times. But what would make you at risk of experiencing this with the copper coil? Well, if you've had previous complications the last time you had an IUD fitted, it might happen again. It might also be the case if you've had previous sexually transmitted infection or womb infection. And some Something else that can make it more likely to have this kind of troublesome bleeding episodes with the copper coil is if you have some structural abnormality with the womb, for example, if you have fibroids as well. Of course, having these symptoms will prompt a visit to your doctor who will um, examine you and they could arrange a scan to identify whether something else or if it's the coil that is responsible for these problems. For treatment, the coil can be removed, replaced with an alternative one or just changed to an alternative birth control method altogether. If an infection is involved, you'll be treated with antibiotics. If this has put you in a better place of understanding how unexplained vaginal bleeding could develop, that's amazing. Please share this video with a friend and then come and join me on this video next.